There's an old stereotype of the western United States that its hard scrabble landscape toughens the soul and makes the people there an unusually resourceful bunch. A place where nothing goes to waste and working with what you've got is a badge of honor. Take Santa Ana, a town of around a thousand people located in the open prairie of West Texas. They keep their Christmas tree up year round in the storefront window of their city hall slash courthouse. As Mayor Harold Farlander explained to us, We have it up all year. We start each holiday that comes along, New Year's, Valentine's Day, Easter, um, Memorial Day, whatever comes up. Everybody asks, why y'all got your Christmas tree up? It's working real good. It's bringing in a lot of good compliments. So. Or the story of early Texas, population 2800. On the one hand, it's a place where you can see the advantages of small town life. It's a community small enough that everyone knows everyone. So if one person um, happens to be ill or you know not doing well, everybody knows and comes together. They do benefits, um, anything they can to help out and raise money. That's the one thing I'd say I remember about early people is just helping everybody in times of need. But on the other hand, there can be challenges to living in a place with limited resources. I remember as kids, and, you know, as teenagers, we didn't, we would go to like the movies and that would be about it. There was nothing, no prom time, no mini golf, nothing productive. So then people would end up getting in trouble. So what do you do to create something for the kids to look forward to? Well, you work with what you've got. Goats, as in show goats. The main point of showing them go is their muscle tone. You're trying to make them look the best they can. And it takes a lot of work. <laughs> it's like bodybuilding for goats. Come on. How can you not fall just a little bit in love with a place that has a thing for goat bodybuilding? Okay, so this episode isn't really about show goats or Christmas trees, although they do look cute together. And fun fact, goats are great at tree disposal. But it is about a particular kind of resourcefulness that we found on this part of our cross-country trip that took us to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe is a city unlike any place I've ever been. It's intimate, but sweeping, modern, but steeped in history. Going through town, you have the sense that there's something special happening here. And we wanted to figure out what that was. If the Old West is a cactus, then Santa Fe is like its prickly pear fruit. It's attractive, delicious, unique, but best approached from the right angle. Longtime Santa Fe and Karen Webb explained the vibe of the city to us this way. Everybody loves Santa Fe. But Santa Fe is a very funny town. It either takes you in, honey, or it spits you out. Not everybody can be here. There has to be that certain acknowledgement that if you don't understand the magic, you're not going to be happy here. Part of the magic is being involved. Karen is like the fairy godmother of Santa Fe. Where there is a need, she's drawn to address it, connecting the wealth she sees in town with those who are lacking. And in Karen Santa Fe, people come to her to find out how they can help. Last week, I had a trunk load full of baby clothes. And I was thought, oh, maybe somebody at the homeless shelter would have a baby. I was on the wrong door. And what door was it? It was a teenage pregnancy program. They were so happy that we were crying as we went to the car. I had a car with little baby clothes. And that's how I work it. People have been gifting me these items. I give myself one week to find somebody who needs it. And I do. And it falls in that way. So that's what I do. Karen's one-woman quest to help those most in need has attracted a community of devoted followers that might look a little different than you'd expect. I deal with mostly people who are motorcycle enthusiasts. I started with this group and we put together what is called Toys for Tots. I also went out to the prison and did Toys for Tots for eight years, and made backpacks and wheelchair cushions, and then I would find their families and bring them their Christmas presents at Christmas time. And we started a program called Wings for Hope because the school system here changed to a uniform about 17 years ago. 17 years ago, if you had two kids and you had to go buy two sets of uniforms, you didn't always have the money. 
So if you were a band of motorcycle enthusiasts looking to help kids in your community, what would you do? Well, a toy ride, of course. And Wings for Hope does way more than just a toy ride. Their work includes gathering food, clothing, school supplies, and mentoring. And everyone sure seems to be having a blast while they're doing it. Looking at what Wings for Hope has built in Santa Fe, I can't help but draw a parallel between the members' love and care for their bikes and how they've extended that to each other and to the most vulnerable in their community. To me, Karen and her merry crew cyclists are an example of the special magic of Santa Fe. They took what they had to work with, a shared passion for motorcycles and gathering people together, and they transformed that into something that has been helping the kids of Santa Fe for over 20 years. There's a deep history to the resourcefulness you find here. Everywhere you go, you're reminded that long before European settlers arrived, native peoples had been making an art form out of working with what the desert has to offer. Let me introduce you to Chef Lois Ellen Frank of Red Mesa Cuisine. As the daughter of a Native American mother and Jewish father growing up on the East Coast, she often felt like she didn't fit in. Her search for a home brought her here. I wanted to be in an area where there were indigenous people and indigenous people were revered a little bit more than some of the other areas in the United States uh, in terms of a voice and that I was going to do Native American cuisine and Native American foods and promote uh, an indigenous food agenda and food sovereignty. Red Mesa Cuisine's mission is to bring Native American dishes into the contemporary Southwest kitchen using ancestral ingredients with a modern twist. Lois's culinary expertise has introduced thousands of patrons to Native foods and traditions, but getting started wasn't easy. I went to New York to propose doing a cookbook on Native American cuisine, and the publishers told me that I didn't have any credentials and that Native people didn't have a cuisine and I couldn't prove them wrong. Lois did write a book, Foods of the Southwest Indian Nations, that went on to win the prestigious James Beard Award for American Cooking. At a Red Mesa meal, you're likely to be introduced to traditional native dishes like savory tamales with sweet potato topped with red chili sauce, hominy corn stew, and locally raised bison stuffed New Mexico green chili. I work with Chef Walter Whitewater, who's from the Navajo Nation. We work with wild and cultivated foods. We work with local farms. We work with both native and non-native community members to source our food. We are not normal caterers in the sense that we don't just do a meal, we do what's called culture and cuisine. So you get to eat, but you have to be educated on what the cuisine is and the contextualization of the ingredients in terms of the people and where they come from and how they've evolved over time. When you get really traditional food is during the ceremony. So you get to see the blue corn. You get, you get to see the different way how they prepare the stew. It came with the songs, with the stories, with the healing and all that, the food that brought people together. Food is our medicine, yeah, is it, you know? It was not only the food was getting lost, it was not only the, the stories, all the culture, or the way of living was, you know, kind of like fading away. You know, it was the food, too. But there is another way to bring it back. So that's where I came in, and, and Lois and I, that we worked together. Red Mesa's meals embody the resourcefulness of people who know how to make the most out of a scarce environment. In Lois's garden, all of the many local native plants are edible. Many prized for their medicinal powers as well as their flavor. So I think food is a metaphor. There's a term we use a lot in the food that we do is food is our medicine. And if we look back in time and we look back in history, especially amongst native communities, everything had a medicinal purpose. Food is what you ate to sustain yourself, not only your body, but your mind and your spirit. When we use this food, not only do we honor the ancestors, we revitalize everything associated with it. And it's a form of food sovereignty. It's a form of reclaiming what was lost during the period when the bison was slaughtered and uh, tribes were subjugated to government rations and being relocated onto reservations. So it's really important. So we do a lot uh, just that one ingredient 
um, represents so much and we educate our clients on what that means and what that does and uh, how that affects when we buy from a native organization or a native purveyor, how that perpetuates not only the food, but everything associated with the food. I think everybody can participate and everybody can play a role in this and that's what makes it so exciting. My takeaway from our time in Santa Fe? A little pluck and resilience can go a long way towards creating the positive change that you want to see in the world around you. Even in the desert, where very little comes easily, there is an abundance of generosity and ingenuity that thrives instead. In the struggle, you get a sense of the rich shared identity and purpose that fighting for their causes gives to Karen and to Lois. It's a lesson that I, for one, am taking with me. And anybody who comes here, uh, my first thing I tell them is, you know, when they say, well, it's very hard to meet people. I think that's any place. My first suggestion always is volunteer. Volunteer. Find something that you like to do, whatever walk of life you came from. There's always a niche that will get you involved with the people that you want to help. Because that's how the community works. It really is, it really is unique. I wake up every day not only grateful for who I am and what I do, but the difference I'm going to make, um, not only in my own life, but in all the lives I touch. And all of us can do that. Our time in West Texas and Santa Fe makes me wonder, what would it look like if more of us had the mentality that there was opportunity hidden in the world around us? If we embraced the idea that nothing goes to waste, would we find more of the sense of purpose and connection that we saw here? Sometimes working with what you've got, the limitations of scarcity, that could be the catalyst for something special. Like a motorcycle posse toy drive, a year-round Christmas tree, the healing powers of native cuisine, or especially show goats. That's our show. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on social media, and get in the car, because we're going to Denver next.